Welcome back to our deep dive into software testing. Today, the focus will be on unit tests and test-driven development. If by any chance you missed the previous episode, there should be a link to it in or around this video. Assuming you're all caught up, let's get started. Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to Development That Pays. I first came across unit testing in about 2008. By that point, I'd been developing full-time for a few years. I thought I had it down. But writing unit tests turned out to be really, really hard. Ten times harder than writing code. Very, very depressing. <laughs> what I discovered over time is that it wasn't my fault. Much of the stuff that I thought was impossible to test really was impossible to test. It wasn't me after all. Why were the tests impossible to write? I was trying and failing to write a test for something that was not like a spark plug. Remember last time we talked about testing the gap of a spark plug? That's a perfect example of a unit test. Another perfect example would be a test of its resistance. With the right equipment, we could even perform a unit test to confirm that it sparks. All of these tests are possible because there's something special about a spark plug. It's testable. By design, it can be removed from the engine. It's one of the few things in the world that has a more or less standardized tool for removing it. If you have a socket set, the chances are that it includes a spark plug socket. And the chances are very good that it fits the spark plugs on your car, your motorbike, even your lawnmower. Now, I'm not sure if spark plugs were designed to be testable specifically. I think it's probably the case that spark plugs were designed to be replaceable. And testability came along as a rather useful side effect. It's been my experience that things rarely evolve naturally to be replaceable and testable. They are replaceable and testable by design, or not at all. Nowhere is this more true than with software. I can say with a high level of confidence that if your code base does not have unit tests, then your code base consists largely of untestable code. Which brings us nicely on to test-driven development. I thought it meant that you wrote all your tests and then started writing your code. It turns out that you start by writing a fraction of a test, then you write some code, then you write a bit more of the test, and then you rinse and repeat. The code and the tests are born and grow together. The testability of the code is baked in. That's part of the payback for the marginal additional effort in developing the test. And there's more payback in that the test will now be executed hundreds, thousands, possibly millions of times. Indeed, many developers have set things up so that all unit tests run every time they hit the save button. Remember our two teams? As I'm sure you guessed by now, the team that asked to write tests and got their wish had asked to write unit tests. We spent two weeks battling with untestable code. Tests were produced, but most were tests of things that turned out to be easy to test rather than things that were important to test. Our time would have been better spent on writing a different kind of test, a kind that can be applied to any code base, no matter how untestable the code may be. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next episode. Talk to you then.